Hey guys, I'm here to talk about how to prep yourself for a workout, how to move through a workout. If you're interested in doing more working out, whether that's at home, at the gym, and whatever you decide is your form of working out. But if you decided you want to do that, what are some ways to make it smarter, safer, and more effective, right? And to leave you only feeling better definitely helping you not get hurt or create any new strain or pain because that's really easy to do with adding a new workout regimen isn't it yes we know there's going to be maybe some sore muscles and some tightness which we can use various exercises to deal with the next day right but also we want to be careful though because we can injure things and if we've got some area of us that's a little bit vulnerable and ready to have injury perhaps if it's pushed a little bit further we can create injury in our workouts so we really do want to be smart and careful and paying attention during our workouts of course is part of it but it's important to consider what can you bring into your workout what can you do before your workout during your workout after your workout of whatever sort whether it's with weights whether it's running whether it's even an exercise class um, whatever is your thing maybe it's even like surfing golfing various activities. All of these things use the body, which is great. Some of them have their own impact on the body, which is helpful sometimes. Other things can start to create some imbalances, right? Some left and right differences and strength differences, which can start to create problems. So also if we're involved in like a sport or an activity, it's pretty important to be doing some of the right things around that. And within that activity to make sure that you feel good through it, you don't get hurt, and you do actually get the effects that you want. So some of what I wanna share is, first of all, before a workout, some of the important exercises that you wanna include, we all kinda of have this sense that maybe we should stretch, right? And maybe we've learned some stretches along the way that we think maybe work or help us, and so we'll pull some of those out. Whether we learned them 20 years ago, two years ago, whatever, right? So that can be interesting, but sometimes we need to update that regimen and routine and a lot of us are missing some important pieces that handle our alignment which is what i've gotten to learn a lot about in helping people get out of chronic pain and prevent chronic pain is using the exercises to really address structural alignment and posture so that you're helping yourself get really we could say as straight as possible with your alignment with your structure before you do any strengthening and that's part of what's going to help resolve pain issues is when you handle your alignment. And that's what's going to help you prevent pain issues is to handle your alignment before you do anything else. So you want to use some exercises that are going to address some pretty basic areas on all of us that need some help most days because our daily lives are also doing some things to our posture, right? Doing some things to our bodies. Even the lack of use is doing some, some um, harm to the body, all the sitting that we're doing, right? In chairs, especially. So we wanna do some things to straighten out the posture, undo things like that rounding in the upper back, neck and shoulders, that's all of us have some sort of. We also, most of us have some sort of imbalances in the hips, whether it's one hip tending to get higher, whether it's hips and pelvis tending to get a little bit twisted, a lot of us have a pelvis that's a little bit out of position. So we do really want to address these things before we do much else. So you can do it very quickly and easily with the right exercises to straighten out neck and shoulders, to straighten out hips and pelvis, and also to strengthen those areas, importantly, before you do much else, so that you're ready to hold that alignment through the activities. And then it's amazing if you add your strengthening workout, whatever it is, on top of your alignment work. But because you've done your alignment work, now you're doing your workout with your neck and shoulders straighter, without that rounding, with your hips straighter, with your pelvis straighter. So this is gonna help all those exercises work better and not have any damaging impact. Because that's when we can get hurt, is when we're going into our workouts out of alignment with that rounded neck and shoulders, with those hip and pelvis imbalances, that's when we get hurt. And that's when we actually only strengthen those imbalances. When we go into a workout with the rounding, with the left and right differences, we only strengthen those imbalances and the alignment issues. So it's super important that we address the alignment, whatever that is, most of us have at least some of that going on, and then use that always before we do anything else. So 
that's an important piece that we want to realize is yes, stretch before, but do things to stretch, straighten your neck and shoulders, stretch, straighten your hips and pelvis, and get your body ready for whatever you're going to do. And then some of the awareness that you can bring in that are things that we could say we get from something like yoga into any activity that's going to help it be safer, smarter, and more effective is to, in a way, let it be a form of meditation, right? And mindfulness. So it's really bringing you present in your body, which is part of why movement and motion can feel so good. And it is doing energy work for you, whatever you're doing, right? It's shifting your energy. So it's important to see it as a form of meditation and let it be, but that also means tuning into yourself and tuning into your body throughout it, making sure that you're not doing anything that feels like too much. If it feels like pain or strain, it is. And really from yoga, we learn to stay away from things that feel like pain and strain, even though we like to get that sense of work in our workouts. So it's really getting tuned into your body and yourself, and each day may be a little bit different. This is so a yoga approach to really be present and listening and even loving with your body, even if you're doing things that are strengthening, but doing it in a loving, listening way, right? And if your body at all lets you know it needs a break or it's getting to be too much, it's so important at that moment that you pause. And then that at those moments too, you pause, take a break, maybe do some more important stretches to realign some of those important areas and, and to let it be a time to be building that connection with your body, right? And so you're listening to your body, you're letting it tell you when it needs a break. And in that way, it's gonna be that much more effective for you long run and help you also make sure you don't hurt yourself, right? Because often if you're listening, you can tell when you're getting to that point where it's too much. And the problem is then if you strain something, then you can't do your sport or your workout, right? So it's so important. And then beautifully, we can learn to bring in our breath to any activity. That's something that's part of any form of yoga, right? And any form of exercise or movement, it's gonna be even better if you bring in more conscious breath and maybe even more smooth, full breath and an awareness of your breath. And that's gonna just bring in that much more oxygen fresh energy into your body, your cells, your muscles, your organs, right? And have that exercise of whatever form you're doing just be even more nourishing for your body and amazing energy work and even continuing to feel like a form of meditation, which it is, right? It's really bringing you into the moment, bringing you into the body, giving you time to be with and listen to yourself. And that can be interesting about workout time too, obviously, right? It's time to be with yourself, listen to yourself, like all forms of meditation. So could be bringing in that self-love and compassion as we do that <laughs> could be a real like up level on the experience so yeah those are some of the main things and then when we're doing any form of workout especially if we're lifting weights and such we really do want to pay attention to our alignment during those exercises do things like standing if we're standing do th as if you're standing at a wall make sure your feet are hips width and straight make sure you're, you're ready to do it with good alignment and good form and you should only do as much as you can do with good form with any exercise. As soon as you start to lose your good form, it's no longer helpful and definitely could hurt you. And then if you're doing sitting exercises, making sure you're sitting nice and aligned. And But really, a lot of the time, standing is preferable for a lot of things like free weights. I'm talking about weights specifically. But yeah, those are some of the tips. And, and just, again, letting it be a time to be tuned into your body, creating more connection, listening, to the body and and then yeah noticing how I would vote that you'll feel just great afterwards be even more likely to want to do it again right because you made sure you didn't do anything that hurt you you did your prep work to make sure you didn't get hurt right and yeah then you'll see the results feel the results and actually get to have that long-term progress instead of maybe it's like a been a roller coaster for you of in and out of movement in your life right maybe this is some of why so now adding the alignment adding the awareness adding that listening to your body approach i would say could give you a different experience with your working out whatever form it is so hope that's helpful today you guys love you so much and reach out if you want any ideas or some of those straightening exercises i'd be happy to send you a couple ideas just to add to your pre-workout all right talk to you guys soon namaste